Match points are on offer today as FIMCV Repsol draws ever closer to the season finale. Only five races now remain before it's crunch time in Valencia. Will any of the leading contenders take it to a tie break in early November? Or can our three title leaders make sure it's game, set, match here at Motorland Aragon? A very good afternoon and welcome back to Alcañiz in North East Spain for round six of the FIM CV Repsol series here at Motorland Aragon. It's Jack Appleyard and Lewis Sudderby with you once again with a bumper Sunday coming your way. A pivotal European Talent Cup scrap after double Dutch delight yesterday, plus two European Moto2 encounters where Yari Montea will be hoping to be crowned our 2020 champion. But Lewis, a very good morning actually. It's not afternoon yet to your first mate. We've got our opening FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship race where it is almost guaranteed Guaranteed that the pieces of the title puzzle will fall into place throughout the day. Yeah, good morning, Jack. The races are ticking away as we now head into what is officially the second half of this FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship season. And if we have a race to match this that we saw yesterday, we're in for a couple of absolute crackers. Well, the headlines yesterday were stolen by one man, Ethan Guevara, starting from 22nd on the grid after wet qualifying on Friday, caught him out and saw the Aspar rider down on row number eight of the grid. But that didn't bother him one jot. He made up 11 places on the first lap before then getting himself into the lead by lap number six. It's a bold statement, but it definitely goes down as one of the greatest FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship performances in recent history. The title chase took a huge twist when Pedro Acosta, the man second in the title chase at the time, was taken out in an incident involving Diogo Moreira. At the front, though, there's Guevara making his way through, picking off rider after rider. Once he got to the front, it was anything but plain sailing there with Xavi Artigas, our championship leader, and Jose Garcia, one-time race winner this year so far in Jerez, getting in amongst it as well. He also had his teammate Danny Holgado, the man that started from pole position to contend with. He was going to war with David Salvador throughout the middle parts of the race. Guevara had control though with three laps remaining before then Holgado would hit the front with two laps remaining, only for the young Spaniard to crash out at turn 14 and allow Guevara to hit the front. Artigas tried his very best to try and get back at him and extend his championship lead out even further, given the fact that Acosta had already already crashed out. But as we came into the chicane on the final time, Salvador would lunge up the inside of Josito Garcia, which allowed the opening two to escape, and Guevara would hold on to take win number two of the year, and by far his best yet. An unbelievable performance, going from 22nd on the grid to first, but Lewis, he's got to do it not once, but twice again today. He has, although I suppose he's now had a practice run for it. He's already shown that he's capable of coming through from 22nd on the grid, and he only needed less than half race distance to get to the front, and then of course he managed it from there. It's going to be fascinating to see how fast he can make that same progress today and whether he can add to the victory he took yesterday, because he is the form rider in the FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship as we head in to Sunday here at Motorland Aragon. He absolutely is the form rider. He's taken 70 out of the last 75 points, has Guevara, only 16 years of age, is the Mallorcan. Last year, the 2019 European Talent Cup champion, and he's looking to pick up back to back championships. He's right in the mix now to win this 2020 Junior World Championship. But the one man that he's going to have to beat, the one man that has been pretty consistent, pretty impressive all year round, is Xavi Artigas. He will line up on the second row of the grid. We'll get to him very shortly. But first, it's redemption day. I'm sure he will hope for Danny Holgado. Starts from pole position once again and still searching for that career first win. If anything will light a fire in his belly, probably seeing his teammate win yesterday. Yeah, especially from where he came from. But yeah, he's coming off the back of back-to-back -back crashes, Danny Holgado, and of course, he could quite easily have taken the victory for Aspar himself yesterday. So a bit of a point to prove for him today. Uh, he's kind of slipped out of championship contention now with those two back-to-back non-scores. He trails leader Artigas by 61 points. Now, that's not irretrievable, but with only five races to go, if he doesn't make a big dent into that this weekend, then I feel his chances are gone, and the Aspar team tops will be hanging on the shoulders of Guevara. Here is Jose Julian Garcia starting second on the grid, backing up his victory at Jerez with another podium yesterday. And he was at the front throughout. He was fighting at the front. He was following that match that we've mentioned a few times in these FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship races where the safest place is at the front. He was at the front more than most yesterday. 
As you can see, he's yet to finish outside of the top 10 this year. He's on a good run of form himself as well with back-to-back -back podium finishes. That career first win in her F backed it up with a podium yesterday. And uh, I'm sure that will mean a little bit more to him. Knowing that the boss is here as well. We saw Paolo Simoncelli stalking his way down pit lane. I'm sure that will have uh, given him a, a wry little slap on the bottom to hurry up this afternoon. He will indeed. Yeah, the boss is watching over him. What a big day it is for this young man, Pedro Acosta, who trails now by 41 points uh, in the championship standings he's on 77 he's dropped from second to fourth as a result of that crash yesterday which we didn't get the clearest view of it but it looked as if he was an innocent party in an incident involving diogo marrera and it's just showing the value isn't it of just staying consistent and getting points at every race pedro acosta when he's reached the checker flag he's never been off the podium so far this season but those two non-scores which are the three riders ahead of him in the championship have scored every single round it's cost acosta dearly and he needs to uh, make a dent to that championship uh, lead today he's far from out of it because he's shown he's got the pace at any given race but yeah he needs to get those points on the board he's been dreadfully unlucky as well both of those cr both of those crashes both of those non-scores neither were his fault on the last lap in her f he had a little bit of contact with danny holgado just nudging the handlebar and down he went at pedrosa corner and then the same yesterday the teammate to lorenzo Frillon. Diogo Marrera took in the front at turn 13 and Acosta on the outside had nowhere to go. So those are valuable points on the floor and they're coming through mistakes that he's not made. So definitely he will be in the mix once again today if he can stay out of trouble, as will Lorenzo Fallon, I'm sure, buoyed by a personal best fourth place yesterday. The rookie into the championship this year, having moved up from the European Talent Cup, has been slowly making progress. Was a little bit erratic at first with a number of crashes, but seems to have found his rhythm now as has this man what a ride from max cook yesterday from fifth on the grid picked up a first ever top five finish and with a broken pelvis as well not bad from the swindonian yeah incredible and you just saw from his results there as well when he's stayed on the bike and reached the checker flag he's been in the top seven uh, at every race so far and yeah incredible bravery incredible toughness from max cook uh, and it equals as we mentioned yesterday the best british result in this class for six years yeah, incredible performance from him. He actually said yesterday, we were chatting to him in the hotel, from a social distance, of course, and we had our masks on, you know, we're liking to make sure we're abiding by the rules and regulations, but we we're chatting to him, and he said he actually feels that he's riding better with a broken pelvis. He's, the thing he's struggling with is the left-hand turns more than the right, because obviously he broke the left-hand side of his pelvis. Asking whether today, obviously having two races in a day, whether that's going to take it out of him. He says he feels like, certainly in the second half of race number two, it could well be a little bit of a, an issue for him to try and battle his way through, but... He's a, he's a tough lad, he's Max, 17 years of age. He's battled through injuries before, and I'm sure he'll be able to grit his teeth and get through this one as well. We just saw our championship leader there, Luis Xavier Tigas. He's already got himself a seat in the 2021 Moto3 World Championship, and quite rightly as well, given his performances this year so far. Absolutely, just relentless consistency from him. The only time he's been outside the top two this year was when he was the innocent party of an incident back at Jerez, where Munoz lost the front at turn eight and just ran him off the road. He's still very mounted to finish eighth in that race, um, but he has been relentlessly consistent, and he, he hasn't really shown any blistering speed, I wouldn't say, at any stage this weekend. He's just been there or thereabouts right the way through the weekend, and he showed his race craft yesterday. He just picked the right moments to attack, was in the right spot at the right time, and he was ahead of that crucial incident on the last lap that, that we saw, that overtake going onto the back straight, which really caused a bit of a split in that leading group. Artigas was the right side of that, and he banked another crucial 20 points. We just saw Grandad Gerard, Gerard Rio, 20 years of age, the oldest man on the grid, he'll front row number three, a top 10 finish for him. Yesterday, I'm sure we're hoping for a little bit more, as will this man, Nicholas Spinelli. Starting from eighth yesterday, dropped back to 17, only two points going finishes so far, but the Italian has showed good one lap pace. He just needs to try and string it together on a full race distance now. Yeah, he took full advantage of the rain-affected qualifying that we saw here on Friday. And as you can already see, conditions an awful lot better today uh, for the uh, FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship. The wind has died down, which was pretty strong yesterday. And of course, as we mentioned yesterday, the wind and the rain were pretty severe on Friday. Conditions pretty much perfect today. Would still like it to be a little bit warmer than it is, but it's perfectly dry and there's no sign of any rain few clouds in the sky but none that look likely to threaten the action here 
Well, you've cursed it then. It's going to absolutely <laughs> chuck it down at midday. It's 5 to 11 here, local time, so it obviously will warm up throughout the day. Here's a man looking for a little bit of redemption as well. Another one on the grid. Diogo Marrera, the unfortunate uh, man who took out Pedro Acosta yesterday, took the front at turn 13. The Brazilian is another rookie in the class, making great progress, as you can see, in Jerez, a fifth seventh a six or battling in that leading group as he was yesterday before the incident where he crashed out remounted came across the line 28 but obviously no points for that so he'll be hoping to get himself back into the leading group today and try and mix it with the big guns yeah we'll take a look then at the front row of the grid we'll have the full grid lineup for you shortly Holgar on the front row ahead of garcia and acosta uh, and yeah this is a key race for the championship just four races will remain uh, after this one, of course, a second later this afternoon, then three across two days at Valencia in November. This is a crucial, crucial stage of the FIA Moto3 Junior World Championship with Artigas leading it by 29 points from Guevara, who, reminder, starts 22nd on the grid once again. Another two men to keep your eye on when we go through the grid shortly. 11th on the grid, Adrian Fernandez. 15th on the grid, Kazuki Masaki. Both of those guys, with another couple of laps yesterday, would have caught the leading group. So keep your eye on the bright yellow Husqvarna as we go through the race. Right, this is it. Race 7 of 11 in the FAM Moto3 Junior World Championship with Danny Holgado on pole position once again. Joining him on the front row, Jose Garcia and Pedro Acosta. Row 2, Lorenzo Full on Max Cook and championship leader Xavi Artigas with row three Gerard Rio, Nicolas Spinelli, and Diogo Moreira. Heading row four, then we have Filippo Palazzi ahead of Adrian Fernandez and Raffaele Fusco, Salvador Munoz and Masaki on row five with Clement Rouget, Munoz and Senna Agius on row six. Agius got his first points yesterday. Going back onto row number seven of the grid, where we'll find another Australian in Joel Kelso to the junior talent team guys, Tachikon Boazri and Scott Ogden as well. Ethan Guevara, there he is, the number 28. Keep your eye on the Aspar man. Yesterday's race winner, Takuma Matsuyama, the Asia talent team rider, said he went with him yesterday and was able to finish ninth in the end. A great result for the Japanese rider. Yeah, well, on row 10, we have Asban, Plonkes and Rehecek. And keep an eye, 32nd on the grid, the number 95 of Jose Rueda. He went from 32nd all the way up to 12th yesterday. So he's another rider who's going to be carving his way through the pack. Two races today then in the FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship. As we said a few moments ago, this is going to be a pivotal day in the championship. The pieces of the puzzle will surely start to fall into place when it comes to three o'clock this afternoon. Who can take victories in both of our races? Who can take control of this championship? Yeah, it looks like it's four riders remaining in the fight for the championship at the moment. David Salvador finished sixth yesterday. He's fifth in the championship. And, of course, Holgado's crash, back-to-back uh, -back DNS for him, have dropped him a little bit out of contention. Artigas, Guevara, Garcia and Acosta, uh, they are covered by 41 points. 12 points covers second to fourth. No one rider, really, has made a, a considered or a consistent effort to chase down Artigas, who's just remained consistent at the front. They'll be looking to make a dent into that this afternoon. Reminder, two races to come. And Artiga starting on that second row. It's a tricky turn one here. We mentioned this yesterday. It's a very, very short dash to the first corner and a very, very slow and very tight left-hander. There's not an awful lot of room in there. It's very easy to get pinched on the inside or even get ran out wide on the outside and be the victim of someone else's accident, which is something that will be in the minds of the top two in the championship. Artigas, who's fairly well up, but sixth, could land him in a bit of trouble if he gets a poor star. And of course, Guevara is going to be right in the action zone into turn one. We mentioned it yesterday and we'll do it again. Send our best wishes out to Billy Van Erde, the Australian who unfortunately can't be here after breaking his femur in a crash in Jerez. Get well soon to the Aussie and to Shona Shimura as well, another of a former Asia Talent Cup competitor who unfortunately broke both fib and tib in a wet weather crash on Friday. So to the pair of them, get well soon. Hopefully we'll see them in Valencia. Yeah, this is the key action zone I think that we'll see in this race today. The long back straight, just short of a kilometre long, and the slipstream is so important. We saw that yesterday. It played a huge role in the race. It's so important to get yourself positioned right out of turn 15 and have a good run into the back straight. We saw, of course, the uh, fight for the final podium position there with Garcia 
uh, and fell on. That move into the uh, penultimate uh, left-hander, which really did uh, affect the run into that long, uh, that long back straight into the final corner. You really want to make sure you get a good exit from that corner. It's an overtaking spot in its own right, turn 14 and 15, but it really does penalise you if you don't get that run right onto the long kilometre back straight because the final corner here is a long, long left and it tightens on the exit, so it's very easy to get it wrong. Xavi Artigas, the championship leader, more than happy to be one of the last men to take his place on the grid. He will start from six, got a good start yesterday, was able to stay out of trouble. Added the pole man, Danny Holgado, a debut pole position, just the just second time in his career that he's been able to start from the front of the grid. Put it to good use yesterday with a whole shot. Can he do the same again? This is it. 50 points on offer today in Aragon. The championship will surely take more twists and turns. But which way is it going to go? We wait to get the action in Aragon. Underway here on Sunday. Holgado from Paul with Garcia and Acosta alongside him. It's lights out. And we're off here in Aragon with Holgado once again getting a dynamite start from pole position. This time Acosta will go with him. But it's Holgado once again that will take the whole shot into Turn one. Yeah, Max Cook got away well as well. Artigas pretty much holding station at the back. We've got two riders down, down at turn one at the back of the field. We'll try and get a view on that in a moment. The yellow flags, understandably, are out, but they look to be holding station amongst that top six at the moment with the Holgado leader. Costa now making a run for second and fell on. Looks as if he's made a good start too uh, with uh, Jose Juni Garcia dropping a couple of spots. Yeah, Garcia back to uh, fourth at the moment, is he? Yeah, Max Cook there as well. Well mentioned him, the Swindonian, looking up the inside of Garcia and gets the job done. No, he doesn't. Just clips the rear of Garcia. That is Tacha. No, it's not. It's Super Mario Achi. Oh, disappointment for the Indonesian, just nursing his way back to fitness this weekend. So that is not what he would have wanted. Getting a full race distance under his belt is exactly what he needed. There we go. Confirmation that it was Senna Adjus, the uh, Australian and Mario Adji Super Mario that it's gone down in that turn one incident. Focusing at the front though, Chabi Artigas, our championship leader, has managed to battle his way through up to fifth now ahead of Max Cook. Staying out of trouble so far is the 43. Yeah, he took him into turn eight, got up the inside of him into the right hander. Check on some of the riders further down who were looking to come through the grid. Ifan Guevara's already up six places, he's up to 16th on the opening lap. And Rueda, who started 32nd, he's already up 10 to 22nd. Well, we might as well start the jaw music now with Ethan Guevara. He is coming. That is absolutely guaranteed. We'll keep our eye on him to see what sort of progress he can make. Remember, it took him just six laps yesterday to get to the front. There he is in the back of your picture, the black helmeted number 28. He's already picked off another two there down the back straight. Meanwhile, teammate has lost the lead. Danny Holgado settles back into second place because Pedro Acosta hits the front of this race here in Aragon. And Artigas up the inside of Garcia into that final corner as well as they go across the line. They spread two, three, four wide down this, lot, this uh, main straight into turn one. Fell on having a look up the inside, but he swats in behind Holgado into third, Artigas into fourth, and Guevara, well, does that compare to what he did yesterday? He's up 10 to 12th on lap one. That's one position short of his first lap yesterday. Pathetic, pathetic. <laughs> Sack him. Steve <laughs> decline. Only picked up nine places on the first lap. What an embarrassing performance. <laughs> it looks as though he's going to be in the mix once again, though, is Guevara. We'll be able to see the number 28 on our camera pictures very shortly. That is almost guaranteed. He's probably in the back of the pack there. Yes, he is at the moment. Meanwhile, back at the front, it's still Acosta that leads the way. Max Cook having a go up the inside. Look, he's having a go at Jose Julian Garcia, and he eases him out and up into fifth position for Max Cook, where he finished yesterday. He's getting in amongst the championship contenders. Yeah, this is not what we saw yesterday. Max Cook was more than happy to sit on the back of the race leaders yesterday in that leading group. I'm sure he'll have learned so, so much, but this time around, he's got a little bit more fire in the belly as the swing down in, and he's battled his way past Garcia at turn number seven, a place where he tried to do it one lap previous, nearly clipped the rear wheel of the uh, 658 Squadra Corsa man, but this time he gets the job done. At the front, though, it looks as though it's a change of tactics from Pedro Acosta. We're sitting in third, fourth, fifth throughout the early runnings of yesterday's race and got caught out. He knows he'll be out of trouble if he leads the race. He is. Safest place is at the front. Artigas looks like he's having a very, very similar tactic as he goes at the inside 
of uh, Danny Holgado. Fallon still holding fourth. Then comes Garcia. He's got back ahead of Max Cook. Ethan Guevara, by the way, is absolutely flying once again on this current lap. He's about to set the fastest lap of the race. He's already into the top 10, and we're only a th uh, three quarters of the way through the second lap. There he is, just going up the inside of Kuziki Masaki as well. That's another position. That's ninth spot for Guevara, and he's getting himself into this leading group, which doesn't appear to be as big as it was yesterday, but importantly, Guevara has got himself onto the back of it. You'll see him at the back of the screen shortly as they cross the line with Acosta leading by next to nothing from Xavi Artigas, who does a 59.6 of the fastest lap of the race, but that is half a second slower than Guevara in ninth position, who does a 159.1 fastest man on track. Only 0.6 of a second away from the Junior World Championship lap record that's held now for four years. have been coming here as Holgado elbows his way past Artigas through the fast turn number three. He gets it done, though, as then they're going to be harder to break into turn five. There goes Garcia up the inside of Fallon. A change for fourth place. No, the Frenchman will hang on around the outside and just about holds on does the number five of Lorenzo Fallon, although Garcia is in the middle of an Australia Galicia sandwich at the moment, and he's quickly not happy with that. He gets himself out of it, and eventually, does he? Yes, he does. Gets the job done, taps the rear of his machine to say, Come on, lads, we're losing touch with the leaders, but Moreira is having absolutely none of it and slices his way through up the inside as well. Yeah, Max Cook got eased out wide there as they went round turn seven. We saw him disappearing off the right <laughs> of screen. He went off on the left-hand side, so he's dropped a couple of spots. Guevara, one of the riders, to take advantage of that. But there is a little bit of a split now in this leading group as they've been fighting amongst themselves. There's two Australia Galicia riders getting involved, and look at these top three getting away, and Garcia has clearly spotted it. Well, Moreira went past Garcia, and just seconds after Garcia had tapped the back of his bike to say, come on, follow me, Moreira went through and did exactly the same. And then Garcia's gone back past him and said, no, 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 mate, I'm not following you, you follow me. Let's get this job done. So it looks as though, at long last, these guys are going to start working together to yeah, try... Yeah, Artigas has got a long lap penalty we're seeing, a grid procedure infraction. We don't know precisely what that is, but the 43 of the championship leader, Xavi Artigas, will have to serve a long lap penalty and as we saw in the European Talent Cup race around Helpy Keras it's not a terminal di uh, disaster for your race but it does cost you around three seconds which will drop him as we look at the timing screens that's going to drop him likely all the way down to 13th or 14th position well 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 big drama in the early stages of this first FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship race not for a jump start a long lap penalty for grid procedure infraction, whether that might be his team working on the bike after the three minute board had gone up, something like that. That's the only thing I can imagine it will be, but hopefully we'll get an indication of exactly what it was later on in the show. We'll certainly let you know as soon as we do, but he has three laps now to take the long lap penalty, which is on the outside of turns nine and 10. When we go through it, we'll indicate it to you. Yeah, and we've talked earlier on about his, his relentless consistency. He's made very few mistakes this year. And we, of course, don't know whether this is his mistake or the mistake of his Leopard Impala Jr. team uh, on the grid. But whatever the problem is, it's going to cost him a lot of time. And it's so, so difficult in a field like this. Once you lose that slipstream, once you lose touch with a leading group like this, it's so difficult to jump back across that gap. And what's also going to be the problem is Artigas. If you look behind him, there's a huge group behind, now led by Ethan Guevara, who else? Artigas is likely to drop himself right back into the middle of that pack. Well, he's done a better job than he did yesterday, as he's done with our on lap number three. At the end of lap three yesterday, he was up to seven from 20 seconds. At the end of lap three today, he's going to be up to fourth. Incredible stuff once again from the Mallorcan. He is slicing his way through the field. Then he's making them look like they're stood still. He is, and of course, he's a net third, really, isn't he? Once the, uh, Artigas comes through the long lap loop, as you mentioned, he's got three laps to do that. He hasn't done it this time around, but I dare say the team haven't had a chance to put it on his pit board yet because it got uh, announced quite late in the previous lap. So there he is, the 43, third position moment for Xavi Artigas, but he is going to be coming through the long lap penalty in the next few laps, which will, of course, promote Guevara onto the podium as it stands. But Guevara's got bigger designs than that. He is already closing in on this leading trio as he tries to... Uh, make this group even bigger and bigger at the front and uh, give Acosta some more Aspar company. There's the confirmation, the board going out to Artigas, you'll see that nice and clear in the fluorescent green. Artigas, that'll be a huge blow to his, uh, to his hopes of uh, winning this race. 
Um, but he's just going to have to get his head down, just try and focus and try and get as many championship points as he can out of this one. As I mentioned yesterday, Angel Piqueras took a long lap penalty and still finished up in fifth position in the first European Talent Cup race. So it isn't the end of his race, but it's certainly a setback. Yeah, it's not a death nail for Ethan, sorry, not for Ethan Guevara, for Xavi Artigas. The reason Ethan Guevara is on the mind because last year Ethan Guevara was still able to win the European Talent Cup race, having taken a long lap penalty. So I'm sure Artigas will be thinking, well, whatever you can do I can do better mate especially given the fact that he trumped him yesterday here we go Artigas making his way down towards turn number eight and nine so they'll go hard on the brakes here for eight then they'll flick nine the downhill court you'll be able to see the long lap penalty is just here right in front of you so you'll have to go pretty much straight on at turn nine and then re-enter right there that's one lap ticked by he's got two more opportunities to take it yeah if we uh, if we add three seconds to his race time at the moment that will drop him somewhere near uh, Munoz uh, David Munoz in what is currently 11th place and Artigas will know full well from last time at Jerez. He doesn't want to be too close to him on track because, of course, Munoz had his own crash at Jerez and nearly took Artigas out altogether. Well, he might be thinking here, he's already got his way in front of Danny Holgado. If he can get in front of Pedro Acosta and almost back him up a little bit, I know he's only got a couple of laps to do it. If he can bring the group back together, filtering his way back into 12th at the back of the group, suddenly isn't that much of a penalty. It's much easier here at Aragon in particular with this enormous near kilometre long back straight to then build his way back through the field. You can see he would fall in two just on the rear of Adrian Fernandez at the moment when he comes back out, probably. He is the number 20 the bright yellow, the fluorescent yellow Husqvarna machine just in the back of the pictures. We came down the back straight there. So it's not a total disaster. Certainly not ideal for him, but it's manageable. What he may also be looking to do, they're telling him LL on his pit board. That will uh, make it even clearer to him as he now goes for the lead of the inside of Pedro Costa. What his strategy may also be, he may be thinking, if I can get to the front and just try and put a qualifying lap or two in, stretch this field out, I might lose still three seconds, but there are less bikes that are going to go past me and I might filter out in eight or ninth position rather than the 11th or 12th that it's looking like at the moment if this I mean if, if Acosta's seen this and he may well have done he might be in the uh, our mindset of well let's slow our T gas up and make sure that he does drop further back because now as we mentioned the riders behind led by Guevara are now right on top of this leading group it's now a leading group of six out the front with a couple of Aspar bikes getting involved with Artigas that's Holgado going through on the 96 Artigas having a look behind him I think he's looking about the safest place to take this long lap he's now on the inside of Guevara he holds that one does he peel off to the right yes he does he's got to make sure he stays within the white lines do not go on to the green otherwise you'll be going through the long lap loop once more so far so good for Artigas pops out perfect long lap penalty and he falls in just behind Max Cook so he drops down to 10th place still in contention there is Xavi Artigas we might not see him for a couple of laps but don't worry by the time there's five laps remaining it's almost guaranteed that blue bike will pop back up again yeah that worked out about as well as it could have expected for Artigas he's not lost too many places he is still just about in touch of course there is a little bit of a gap in this leading group of just nine tenths of a second between Marrera in what will now be a fifth place and Felon in sixth Artigas will be keen not to see that gap get any bigger. Let's see if he makes some progress now as they come onto this back straight and jumps across that gap because the last thing he needs is to be detached from that leading group. Meanwhile, Ethan Guevara promoted to third as a result of that as Artigas picks up one place now ahead of Max Cook and into ninth. The reason we're not going as ballistic as we were yesterday over Guevara, picking his way through from 20 seconds to third is because we've seen it all before. <laughs> he did exactly the same yesterday. It certainly doesn't make it any more impressive as he now edges his way in front of teammate Holgado to take second, but we're not as enthused as yesterday because it's exactly the same script as we had yesterday. It's a sequel, isn't it, for Ethan Guevara? But of course, how the championship can turn when qualifying Qualifying took place. Guevara, of course, wasn't even second in the championship at this point. He was running uh, in third or fourth overall. He's taken second in the championship with that win yesterday. And now with Artigas back in ninth position, all of a sudden, Guevara, if he's running second at the moment with Artigas down in ninth, that would be a net 13-point gain if the race were to finish as it is now, although Artigas is already making up another spot. That's uh, that's the uh, Leglise bike of Masaki that he's just picked off. But all of a sudden, Guevara, from going into this race 29 points behind and with uh, a severe grid handicap. He's now, as it stands, just 20 behind. 
Well, what I've learned from doing Junior World Championship races is not to bother with the championship until the chequered flag <laughs> has come out because it changes that often. You're pretty much having to change your sums and your maths as things are happening, just as we had to do there. Guevara pops in front, the championship picture changes. Pedro Acosta then edges his way back front and it changes once again. So we'll wait till the chequered flag comes out to officially tell you what the picture is going to be going into our third and final Junior World Championship race later this afternoon. Artigas, though, is starting to do a bit of a Guevara. He's already battled his way through to seventh, having settled back in to tenth place after that long lap penalty. Yeah, he's now the second rider in that second group that we'll see just behind this leading uh, group of five. He's got David Salvador just near ahead of him. Uh, they could see him on the red bike with the yellow crash helmet, the number 38. You'll expect Artigas to pull out and try and slipstream past him now as they head down to turn 16. And then Artigas will have just that empty space ahead of him to the leading group. Well, this is absolutely perfect for the likes of Salvador, Masaki, Falon, Fernandez in that second group because they're suddenly going to have Artigas at the front of it, dragging everybody back up to the leading five. And very shortly, I think we're going to have our Ourselves. Never mind a 10-wheeler, it could be a 20-wheeler. Artigas is now at the front of that second group. He's got Salvador with him and Masaki as well. Salvador is going to look up the inside, is he? No, he's not. So now suddenly, Salvador and Masaki will be rubbing their hands together, tucking him behind Artigas and trying to go with him because he's only going to go in one direction and that's forward. And Artigas was the fastest man on that track. He was the only rider on track inside two minutes for a lap time, lap time around 159.8 for him. That was half a second quicker than the leader. Meanwhile, Guevara now has hit the front. It's taken him six laps once again. Just like we saw yesterday, Ethan Guevara from 22nd on the grid has done it again. And he leads here in Aragon. Acosta in behind him and teammate Holgado there as well. Moreira once again inside the leading group. He's going with them once again is the young Brazilian. And Artigas is starting to make inroads into that group ahead of him because Guevara now at the front, a very, very different rider at the front who might well up this pace. We saw what kind of pace he had yesterday and Artigas is going to be doing his level best to try and close in on that as they come through the first sector. He's eight tenths behind the Brazilian in fifth. Of course, Moreira has his own job to do. He's trying to uh, right the wrongs of yesterday when he got involved with Artigas, his main championship contender. That's Senna Agius on the 658 bike who's just pulled in to retire. Got his first points in the Moto3 Trading World Championship yesterday, but unfortunately he won't be adding to that this morning. Yeah, the Aussie Supersport 300 champion of last year, making his bow in the Junior World Championship this year. Had a good performance yesterday, as you rightly said earlier on, Lewis. First ever points for him, but unfortunately it was involved in that crash with Super Mario Agi at turn number one, which I think we're going to get a replay of here. This is the start, obviously, from pole position. Holgado got a lightning one once again to take the whole shot by a good two or three bike lengths. Meanwhile, in the back of your picture, there's going to be a little bit of bumping and barging between most people. I can just see the number 34 on the outside there. Oh, Agi's had to sit up, and then, unfortunately, Super Mario Agi had nowhere to go. A racing incident, but an unfortunate one nonetheless. Yeah, he was just the victim of someone else's accident, unfortunately, there, wasn't he? Whilst we look at the front, as Acosta has got the inside of Guevara, he's now dropped two places to third as Jose Julian Garcia now hits the front. He took the, the line for the last lap in third place, but that double slip streak down the main straight, paying dividends. Artigas, uh, once again, fastest rider on that lap, a 159.4, took another three tenths out of the leading group. He's now just 1.2 off the lead as that leading five just groups together. Cosito Garcia leads here in Aragon then with six and a half laps remaining. A man with a lot of Grand Prix experience may well be on the grid next week in Le Mans waiting for news on Tatsuki Suzuki to see if he's back to full fitness. But Garcia filled in in Barcelona just one week ago and did a brilliant job before unfortunately crashing out in an incident involving Denis Onchu as well. But certainly proved his pedigree on the world stage and will be hoping to make the jump up to the World Championship in 2021. Just like the man behind him will be doing, Pedro Acosta already signed, sealed, delivered. We'll see him on the 2021 World Championship grid. But right now, that's not his focus. Right now, his focus is trying to get himself back into the championship fight after yesterday's disappointment. Yeah, Guevara was shaping up for a move up inside there into turn 12. Didn't quite make it. He's still sitting in third place. It's now a leading group of eight behind them. Lorenzo Fellon, who impressed us yesterday, he's in ninth position ahead of Adrian Fernandez, uh, who's struggling at the moment in 10th. Max Cook slipped back to 11th, although he did a personal best lap last time around ahead of Munoz. And Jose Rueda, 32nd on the grid, we mentioned. He's now all the way up to 12th position. He's uh, battling with Gerard Ryu, with Matsuyama also up in the points as well. He's having a strong ride too. 
He certainly is. He's a Japanese rider, finished an equal best ninth yesterday, having started alongside Guavari Jout when uh, we chatted with him in the hotel yesterday, saying that it was uh, rather beneficial having Guavara line up alongside him because he was a little bit of a, uh, a carrot dangling in front of him and he tried to follow him through as much as possible. That's the boss, Paolo Simoncelli. Well, we panned to him at exactly the wrong time because his own rider has gone from first back down to third and now at the front once more it is Ethan Guavara with Pedro Acosta settling back into second place. We've not really mentioned Diogo Moreira, but he's certainly one man that we need to keep our eye on. Meanwhile, the group has gone from five to eight because we've got three new men joining the party. Javi Artigas, David Salvador and Kazuki Masaki are all there with them now. Yeah, and crucially, Artigas has already made a gain. He's already gone past the pole man, Holgado, up into fifth position. So the progress is continuing. And once again, that is the third lap in a row that for Artigas. He was the fastest rider of that leading group. And the pace that he set him was matched uh, by Masaki and Salvador behind him. They were also in the 159s, while the leaders were in the low to mid two minutes. A two minutes point three for the leader, Guevara. Um, and as you can see, look at the pace that Artigas has. Uh, at the moment, he is the fastest man on track. That lap time that he did last time isn't correct. If he's done it with 146 around Aragon on a Moto3 bike, then he is <laughs> seriously impressive. Yeah, that is impressive. A 146, that's not even the sort of territory for the MotoGP bike. <laughs> so he's doing that on a Moto3, fair play. That definitely would be a lap record, and I think it might stand for a number of mm. years as well. He managed to get himself up two fifth ahead of Danny Holgado, but uh, Holgado has battled back almost immediately. The 15. I think Masaki was up the inside of him as well, just as we saw them just flash through the frame. Indeed, has. Masaki has taken Artigas, so Artigas actually now slightly going backwards through this group. He's led them all to the leaning group, and that's how Masaki thanks him, as we see something being thrown away um, by uh, Salvador, which just fell right in the middle of the track. Thankfully, the riders behind him didn't hit it, but, uh, but yeah, Salvador... A little bit distracted coming onto the main straight. Yeah, it looks as though he probably will have reached into the radiator and pulled some duct tape off there to allow the airflow of the bike potentially overheating. So if he can pull that duct tape off, it'll allow more airflow to go through and just cool back the bike down a little bit, which is understandable given the fact he's in a group fight as well. So hopefully that will rectify any of the small issues that David Salvador was facing. But I'm sure it would have taken Adrian Fernandez by surprise to have a, a big snake looking thing flying down the back straight. It is indeed. Uh, Artigas has managed to rebound back up to fifth again. As I mentioned, the thanks he got for getting himself or getting the other riders up to that leading group was to be overtaken. He's now trying to send a message to Kazuki Masaki. We're now saying that gesture from Antigas telling uh, <laughs> Masaki, just follow me, mate. I've got the pace to tow you right the way to the front of this, as he has done once already. But that's not quite the way this works in FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship. There's not so much uh, collaboration going on, and there's not so much uh, paying each other back going on. Once, uh, once your toe looks at that leading group, it's every rider for themselves. Well, we certainly need to keep our eye on Adrian Fernandez, Lorenzo Fallon, and Max Cook as well, because those three were 0.6 of a second quicker than this leading eight riders last time around. You might be able to see them, those three riders, just off the back of our leading group at the moment. With five laps to go, there's every chance that those three can get into the mix and potentially fight for a podium or a win as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's going to be so interesting to see how this plays out. The uh, top uh, four in the championship all in this group. The riders second, third, and fourth in the championship are currently running in the top three positions. Not in that order, of course, because it's Acosta uh, who's ahead of Garcia uh, in this race at the moment. But behind him in the championship, Artigas looking to get himself involved in that and try and minimize the damage to his championship lead. And of course, a victory is not out of sight yet. He's managed to, as we mentioned, he's managed to limit the damage of that long lap penalty, get back in touch with his leading group. And now he can take stock with four and a bit laps to go as we come out of this long back straight. As we cross the line next time round, out of this next left-hander, there'll be just four laps to go. And it'll be interesting to see what Artigas' strategy is. Three riders getting detached a little bit from this group. The pole man Salvador is amongst them. He's trying to get himself back in front of Kazuki Masaki and David Salvador and try and launch himself back up to this leading group because as we're seeing, a gap is emerging. It's almost a second now as they come across the line with Holgado holding a narrow advantage of the top five, which is scored by just three tenths of a second. And a second now back to Holgado in sixth. Yeah, and you can tell that there's a little bit of panic going on on the Aspar team uh, just in front of us. And from our commentary position, at least two team members were stood up on the pit wall, bending over and waving Holgado on because now is the time he has to detach him or reattach himself to this leading five riders or any chance of jumping onto the podium once more or even picking up that career first win is going to evaporate very quickly. 
Absolutely, yeah. We're looking at this leading group now as uh, Guevara, who's been at the front, I think, more often than not. Artigas up the inside now of Garcia. That's third position now for the championship leader. He's got him amongst them now. Uh, Guevara takes a long look <laughs> behind him. He'll now notice that the rider who he saw earlier on, thinking he may not be a non-factor anymore, Artigas, with the long penalty, he's now right on his tail again. Ah, oh, welcome back to the party, Chavi. <laughs> nice to have you with us. Here we go, then. Three laps to go. And it's anybody's game here in the FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship. Acosta has one wing to his name so far this year. Guevara has two after yesterday's superb performance. And Xavi Artigas, your championship leader, has three victories in his career. Two this year so far. Can he make it number three? He's sat there in third and looking pretty ominous. Yeah, the, uh, the unknown quantity, I suppose, in this leading group, to a certain extent, is Marrera in fifth on the Australia Galicia bike, number 92, the on the blue bike, back of this leading quintet. The top four ahead of him have all won races this year and, of course, are fighting for the Junior World Championship. Marrera, he's not an unknown quantity to Acosta, of course, I mean, what happened, seeing what happened yesterday, but he's yet to stand on the podium this year, the young Brazilian. Best finish this year at fifth position, which he took last time at, at Jerez. He'd, of course, match that if he just stays where he is right now, but I'm sure he's got designs on something a little bit more than that. A potential first podium is just two bikes up the road. There we go, Garcia through into third place in front of Artigas as they cross the line. There's going to be just three laps left. This is the time where track position is absolutely vital. All of them trying to muscle their way through into the ideal place, just like Artigas is doing, replies with a move on Garcia to get himself back into third. But still, one thing is constant, it's Guevara that leads. You're right to mention Adrian Fernandez as well. He's just done his personal best lap of the race, so 159.5. He was as near enough a second faster than the leader last time around. He's joining this group now. Just a second covers the top nine riders across the line last time around. And Holgado, having got himself to the front of that second pack, has now bridged the gap. He certainly has. How many riders have we got battling it for at the front? It looks like it is a 18-wheeler, nine riders all in the mix. As there goes Fernandez up the inside of his teammate. He's only got two and a half laps now to battle his way through to the front of the pack, but it's certainly not over for him just yet, as is the same for Danny Holgado. A second adrift just a lap ago, but he's got his head down and he's got himself back into the fight for the lead. Yeah, he was up the inside of Moreira there. You can see him as they round turn 10. He's got the move done. He's now up into fifth position, Holgado. Moreira drops to sick. So Holgado coming on strong with some late race pace, looking to join his teammate up the front. Uh, and Holgado, uh, Holgado up into fifth. It looks like Moreira might be losing another one. Salvador looked like he was making a move with the inside of him. There he goes, up oh. into sixth. A big moment for Fernandez as he tries to bridge this gap. He's the fastest man on track at the moment, and he's certainly looking like he's pushing hard. Yeah, big bubble from Fernandez. This is the time of the race where everyone's trying now as Salvador and Holgado go side by side through turns 14 and 15. They manage to get it back line astern as they come out of turn 15, probably the most important corner on this Aragon track to get a perfect drive down the back straight. You can see just with them battling through 14 and 15, how in the blink of an eye, they've lost four or five bike lengths to Garcia in front of him, although he's hard on the brakes, his whole Gardo, and he's managed to claw in a little bit more time on Garcia in front of him. Two laps to go then here in Aragon. Guevara leads from Acosta, Artigas and Garcia. It's set up perfectly, isn't it? The top four in the championship are one, two, three and four in this race. There's Acosta, who's currently fourth in the championship, has a look up the inside of Guevara, who's currently second. Garcia, who's third in the championship, has now lost out to Artigas, the series leader, who's now up into third position. It's set up perfectly with Moreira, just with a watching brief in fifth. He's now dropped back behind uh, Holgado again. Holgado running out of time now if he's going to get in amongst this action. But Acosta all over the back of Guevara. But Guevara, much like he did yesterday, comfortable at the front. Guevara more than happy to lead this race. He has done for the past three or four laps. Acosta has constantly shown his front wheel to the 16-year-old, but no way through just yet. Time is running out as well. You have to think, is Acosta just biding his time, more than happy to allow Guevara to lead before then pouncing on the final lap? Well, we're going to find out very shortly because there's just one and a half laps to go as they go down the downhill corkscrew for the penultimate time. Now through Mark Marquez corner, turn number 10. A couple of overtaking opportunities coming up, first of which turn 12, and then on the brakes into turn 14. Here we come, heading towards turn 12. And what we saw a number of times yesterday in the uh, in the first race of the uh, Junior World Championship this weekend as Acosta has a look once again, no way through. Garcia showing 
throwing a wheel up the inside of Artigas again, but as well, no way through. Is that Guevara was very, very strong out of turn 15. He got a very good run onto that back straight, and Artigas, who was second going into that uh, final corner, was unable to even get into the slipstream, let alone have a move and have a dive up the inside into that final corner. Let's see what happens this time around. This is the penultimate time they'll come down this back straight, and look at the speed Guevara pulls out. You know, aboard the KTM is Guevara, he gets absolutely glued beneath the bubble to try and limit the airflow as much as possible. And there he goes, motoring his way down the back straight. Here comes Artigas as well, up the inside. Is he on a costy? Yes, he gets the job done, a brave move. And there goes Gas here as well. He's one lap to go here in Aragon very shortly. And Acosta has been shuffled back from second to fourth in the blink of an eye. Yeah, and what a result this would be for Artigas if he can somehow salvage a result from the long lap penalty. It looks like he's on the wrong side of this. He's on the outside as they go down into turn one. That's not the place to be, Chappie. He's now going to lose through two places and drop to fourth as Acosta takes second place. Garcia, who went across the line in third, stays in third. It's just that the riders either side of him now swap positions. Guevara still holding his own at the front. And that's the most important thing, Lewis, as the guys squabble over second, third and fourth behind with Artigas now shuffled back to fifth place with Holgado through to fourth. But there we go, a change for the lead on the final lap. Acosta dives through at turn number five. Will he run wide? No, he holds it. So Acosta leads here in Aragon. He's looked very strong through there, hasn't he, through this race? He's uh, seen a couple of moves there. Guevara up the inside. He's not taking that. He's going to go straight back up the inside again. I think Guevara clearly wants to lead out of turn 15 because he feels he's got the drive out of 15 and the run down the straight to hold it if he leads out of that corner. So time is running out for uh, for Acosta to make a move. Garcia still holds up Artigas, who's actually now lost one to the second Aspar bike of Danny Holgado. Guevara goes defensive there through turn nine. It certainly affected his drive out of there. Acosta closing in here as they go through turn 10. Turn 11 coming up, the left-hand king. Surely, surely Acosta's going to have a look up the inside as we go on the brakes into turn 12. Here he goes, the number 37. He gets the job done. Acosta hits the front once more. Those two have swapped places now three times on this final lap. Yeah, I think he's realised that if he follows Guevara through turn 15, he's not going to have the drive to get through down the main straight. But does Guevara have the speed to follow Acosta through this left-hander and then just nail him into the final corner? We're going to find out now as uh, Guevara has moved. That's uh, the 22 of Saki running wide, Garcia in third, and look at the drive that Guevara's got. He's in the slipstream. Does Acosta have anything to answer with? He's going to have to go the long way round is Guevara. Acosta goes defensive, hugs the left-hand side of the track, the number 28 on the outside. Can he roll around the outside? Yes, he can. What a move from Guevara around the outside at the last lap on the last corner. Who's going to get the better run to the line? Acosta goes wide. Surely it's Guevara's. Here comes the number 28. He does it once again in Aragon from 22nd on the grid. It's back to back wins for the sensational Ethan Guevara. Incredible, he's done it again. Acosta second, Garcia got third in the end, and Olgado did get the better of Xavi Artigas, so doing his teammate a massive favour in the Junior World Championship. Artigas finishing fifth for 11 World Championship points. So Guevara, with a 14-point game, will now be just 15 behind Artigas at the top of the championship. Woohoo! It's game on in the FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship. Just 15 points separating Guevara, the form man, who's now gone on to pick up 95 out of the last 100 points, and Xavi Artigas, who finishes off the podium for just the second time this year. Pedro Acosta takes a vital second place to keep himself in contention, as does Jose Julian Garcia as well. Oh, what a race that was. Fair play to Pedro Acosta. He threw absolutely everything at Guevara. The pair of them swapping places, not once, not twice, not three times, but an incredible four on a brilliant last lap here at Motoland Aragon. Reason to celebrate for Josito Garcia as well. The Sitch 58 Squadra Corsa man jumps onto the podium for the sixth time in his Junior World Championship career. He's starting to put together a real run of form. That is back to back to back podium finishes. A race win in the final race at Jerev and then two third place finishes here at Jerev. But it's all about that man. What a ride once again. We questioned whether it would be possible to battle his way through from 22nd on the grid again. And he has done it again. This time he did it in an even more impressive fashion. He was up to the leading group by the time we're at lap three. He picked up 10 places on the first lap, a further six a lap later, and suddenly was right there, led the most laps out of anybody else, and eventually had to go the long way round. A brilliant last lap, last corner overtake from Guevara to take win number three of the season. And that also means he's taken the chequered flag on the past four occasions. 
He was demoted to second with the victory going to Jose Julian Garcia having taken the checkered flag in Jerez. And this is exactly how he did it, rolling around the outside of Pedro Acosta into the final corner. Lewis spotted it, he had the drag, he had the drive out of turn 15, he had it all race long, and nobody could challenge him on the run to the line. Pedro Acosta tried his level best, hugging the inside, taking a defensive line, but it simply wasn't enough to keep the number 28 of Ethan Guevara at bay. Bit of goon riding as well from Guevara and a stop here for good measure as he comes into Park Ferme with Nico Tirol, the former 125cc world champion there to congratulate him. It cannot be underestimated the role that Tirol has played in these both Aspar riders. We've not mentioned Holgado who picks up fourth place. So, so unlucky to miss out on the podium, but the pair of them have been brilliant so far this year, as has this man. Jose Julian Garcia putting all of that Grand Prix experience from one week ago to good use to pick up back-to-back -back podiums, back-to-back -back third place finishes here in Aragon. The celebrations continue in the Open Bank Aspar squad. We know that Albert, well, we don't know for certain, but it's highly likely that Moto3 World Championship contender Albert Arenas is going to make his way up to the Aspar Moto2 squad in 2021. Does that mean that that free seat is there for Guevara to take? Just 16 years of age, as we said, last year's European Talent Cup champion, and now right in the mix to become the 2020 FIM Moto3 Junior World Champion. Just 15 points adrift. What a weekend he is having. I'm sure in his wildest dreams on Friday night, having qualified 22nd on the grid, he would not have even dreamt of picking up back-to-back -back victories on Saturday and Sunday. He's done it twice. Can he do it three times? We go once again in the FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship later on today. We're going to be hearing from the 16-year-old Mallorcan very, very shortly. Lewis has made his way down to Park Ferme to get the thoughts of the number 28. Interestingly enough, a KTM 1-2 as well with Pedro Acosta making sure KTMs were there in second place and in fourth as well. A good day for the Austrian factory with Jose Julian Garcia on the 658 Squadra Corsa Honda, the only Japanese bike inside the top four. Xavi Artigas will be disappointed. Fifth place for him, the first time of his own making that he's finished off the podium this year but he will battle back later this afternoon. But let's get the thoughts of the man of the moment. Ethan Guevara makes it back-to-back -back wins here in Aragon. He's with Lewis. Ethan Guevara, 22nd to the win yesterday, and you've done it again today. Just 15 points now off the championship lead. Was this ride even better than yesterday? Yeah, I agree with the race. Uh, but you know, before I started racing uh, in 22 position, and when I fast to, to arrive a uh, little group, uh, I'm kidding the race, uh, I know words, <laughs> incredible. I like to thanks to my team for supporting me and my family and my sponsors. En español. Bueno, es una carrera más difícil que la de ayer porque volvimos a partir de la, de la posición 22. He intentado adelantar al máximo piloto en pocas vueltas, pero veía que el grupo delantero se estaba escapando y, y bueno, eh, le decía a la gente que se pegase atrás, que venía con buen ritmo y me ha costado cogerlos, pero al final hemos podido alcanzarlos y, y nada, eh, quiero agradecer al equipo eh, todo lo que siento por mí y a mis padres por, por todo el apoyo que me dan y a mis sponsors por estar ahí. Congratulations, a good looking race too. Thank you. Another brilliant FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship race here at Aragon with Danny Holgado once again taking a whole shot from pole position. Incident in the back of the picture on lap one, turn one as Mario Aggi and Senna as Juiz had a coming together. Fortunately, both of them walking away okay. But there was drama in the early moments when World Championship leader Xavi Artigas was given a long lap penalty for a grid procedure infraction dropping the Spaniard from third back down to 10th. Meanwhile, in 
The battle for fourth place, there was the likes of Nerrera, Garcia and Fallon all telling each other to follow one another before eventually Garcia got to the front and dragged them up to our leading trio of Acosta, Holgado and what was Artigas before he exited stage right to go through the long lap penalty loop. By this stage, Ethan Guevara was pulling off another sensational comeback ride as he battled his way through from 22nd on the grid once more to be right in amongst the leading group and then at the front with only five laps completed. Pedro Acosta wasn't happy to allow the 16-year-old Mallorcan to take the lead and dominate the race so the number 37 battled his way back in front. Costa tried to bounce back from yesterday's disappointment where he was caught up in a battle and a crash from Diogo Moreira. Jose Garcia was back in the mix in third place with Artigas managing to attach himself back to the leading group, dragging along with him Kazuki Masaki and David Salvador as well. As we went into the final stages, it was Guevara and Acosta that swapped places, not once, not twice. Not three times, but four in a sensational last lap before Guevara rolled around the outside at the final corner to take back-to-back -back wins here in Aragon, both of which from 22nd on the grid. Official confirmation of the results then, and it's 95 points out of the last 100 now for Ethan Guevara, finishing a 10th clear of Pedro Acosta with Garcia picking up back-to-back -back podiums. Danny Holgado, the unlucky man to finish out in fourth with Artigas eventually having to settle for fifth. Fernandez, Salvador, Masaki and Moreira were all there in the leading group inside the top nine. With Fallon there in 10th and Max Cook unable to replicate his top five finish from yesterday but was in amongst it for the most part of the race. The final points going away of Rueda from 32nd on the grid. Takuma Matsuyama and David Munoz. Further back, Scott Ogden was able to pick up a top 20 finish. Leonardo Tacchini there in 20th as well. With Spinelli once again dropping back from 8th on the grid, the Italian hoping to try and put a better race together later on this afternoon. Tachikon Boazri, the Asia Talent Cup rider or former Asia Talent Cup rider, continues his adaption to the world scene there in 24th with Josh Watley also able to see the chequered flag today after having to pull down pit lane yesterday. Podium presentation then and here comes Nico to roll the former 125cc world champion taking yet another race winner's prize for the Open Bank Aspar team. Another great result for Jacito Garcia in front of the boss as well, putting a, uh, another podium on his CV as he tries to tout for a 2021 World Championship ride. I'm sure he will have impressed Paolo Simoncelli with that one. Pedro Acosta bounces back from yesterday's disappointment, but he could not see off the extraordinary Ethan Guevara, P22 to P1, not once, but twice. He seemed a little lost for words, didn't he? As uh, yeah, he spoke to us after the race uh, a little while ago, but he certainly did his talking on the racetrack today. 22nd to the win, twice. Now he'll look to go for the hat trick this afternoon. Surely he can. Surely he can. From 22nd on the grid, it's mind boggling the performance that he's put in across this weekend at Aragon. It's been a pretty good performance from that man as well. Jose Garcia picks up his sixth. World Championship podium in this FIMCEV Repsol class. Pedro Acosta picks up number five of his career. Meanwhile, it is victory number three of the year for Ethan Guevara. Another Spanish top three here, like we saw yesterday with Guevara once again on the top step, and he gets to enjoy the Spanish national anthem.
We're pretty used to hearing that in the FAM Junior World Championship this year with every single victory so far in 2020 going the way of a Spaniard. And to be perfectly frank, with the top five today, all Spanish as well, I think we may well hear that same song in a few hours' time, Lewis. Yeah, a genuine four-way fight though now for the Junior World Championship, including those three riders that you just saw on screen. Led still by Xavi Artigas, but as you can see now, his lead has been slashed to 15 points by Ethan Guevara. Pedro Costa and Jose Julian Garcia now level in third on 97 points apiece, but they're now each just 32 points off the championship leader. Danny Holgado consolidating fifth on 70 points ahead of David Salvador, Adrian Fernandez, Gerard Ryu, and Diogo Moreira into the top nine. A repeat of today's result later this afternoon would see Artigas and Guevara separated by just one point heading to the season finale in Valencia. And if that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. We have got a fight on our hands in the Moto3 Junior World Championship. It's going to go down to the wire in Valencia, but we're bound to see more twists and turns later on this afternoon. What a brilliant way to start the day's proceedings here in Aragon. We've got European Moto2 action coming up next, where we may well see a champion crowned later today. Yari Montea can take a huge stride towards that championship with victory in a few moments' time. We'll switch our attention to that shortly. But one last word goes to Ethan Guevara. He made it back-to-back -back wins in Aragon from 22nd of the grid. Great Guevara does it again here in Aragon. Can he do it for a third time later this afternoon? We'll have to tune in to find out.